Hi everyone, today we have several fourth year medical students here to share their favorite resources that they use to study for emergency medicine, the study schedule that they used, as well as general tips that they have so you can do well on your third year clinical clerkships. What study resources do you recommend for this rotation? Emergency medicine is also a really difficult one to study for because there aren't a lot of dedicated study resources for it because not all schools have an emergency medicine rotation in the third year. So I found that the best thing to do was pre-test EM. That was the best one by far, I think. And at that point, for me in my third year, that was my, one of my last rotations, so I didn't have a hard time. I already knew a lot of the material, so I didn't have to review and had, didn't have to go back, fortunately. I recommend so many resources for emergency <laughs> medicine. Um, so I joined the American, oh man, the Academy, it's called ASAP. It's like the emergency medicine group or whatever. The I can't remember what that term is. But so when you join, or to find a friend that joined this because it's really great. They send you like all of these little resources that you can fit in your white coat and I'm obsessed with all of them. The one that I study from the most is like EM fundamentals. It's technically for residents, but it has everything in here. It tells you like you can short, sort by um, both diagnosis or by complaint and just like see how to treat it. And then there's a bunch of little things too, like little basics on how to do it. And like all the little acronyms like Chad's Vask and stuff are in here. There's an antibiotic guide, which has been super helpful. So if you're interested at all in it, um, EMRA, that's what it is. That's the Emergency Medicine Resident Association. It's pretty cheap to join and you get all of those. And then I also used pretest for emergency medicine, which is a bunch of like questions with well thought out answers. And I just went through this whole book during that time. And both like all of those were super helpful. This was probably by far my favorite clerkship, probably because that's what I'm going into. But there's a lot of resources for emergency medicine that you can use. So since Ural doesn't have a dedicated emergency medicine section, I didn't use it as much during this clerkship. What I found helpful is I bought a one month subscription, like a medical school student's discounted subscription to Ross Review, which was probably like $40 or so. They have a question bank. I think there's like 500-ish questions on there that you can do, which is more than enough for four weeks if your rotation is four weeks for emergency medicine. And it kind of goes through all the high yield things that you'll see on shelf. So Rosh Review definitely helped. Um, I did some of the pre-test questions and looked through case files. And then for emergency medicine, there's a lot of podcasts out there that you can listen to. And I found that really helped since being in the ED can be kind of hectic. You're gonna see a lot of patients and be really fast and you're gonna see basically every type of disease you can imagine. So the podcasts that I liked a lot were MRAP, which you do have to pay for, but it's discounted for medical students. So you can get a membership to MRA and they'll send you a bunch of free little pocket books, um, which are pretty helpful as well. Um, and then EM Basic and then EM Clerkship. The EM Clerkship podcast is probably one of the best podcasts that you can listen to for your clerkship in emergency medicine. He kind of goes through all the typical presentations of all the diseases and he'll even tell you, he has like a series that he'll go through and kind of go through how to succeed and get honors on your clerkship. Emergency medicine, uh, so besides you world, I thought Case Files is pretty good for this one. And it's another one where there's not a dedicated section to it on you world. So if you've become dependent on you world, like many of us do, you're sort of like, ah, how do I study? You kind of forget how to study for something that's not just a subject on you world. So for surgery, or not for surgery, sorry, for emergency, I did the um, pulmonary and cardiac sections of you world. I hadn't taken medicine yet when I took emergency. Uh, and that was pretty, pretty helpful. Maybe a little overboard. Again, AMBOSS I thought was good. They do have an emergency section. And then I did case files which I didn't get all the way through. I had a hard time getting through all the case files, but yeah, another tough shelf, but you get through it. Okay, emergency med is another one that I would recommend getting one extra resource for. There's no specific UWorld section for emergency med. There's no Emma Holiday video for emergency med. There's no really specific section uh, just for that. And I think there's only one NBME. So that one is a really light in terms of the resources available for emergency med. So I would highly recommend getting an additional resource, whether it be case files or pretest. The most of the my classmates that used pretest really really liked it. They said it was really helpful. So I think that one I would give that one my recommendation. Uh, it's not case files. What is it? A uh, Rosh review, the pretest thing. Um, I have a PDF copy of that book which is a big, I think like five or 600 questions and super useful. I think some of them are actually a little bit more difficult than the shelf exam. I think some of them are geared maybe more towards residents with like, they have like ultrasound, they have EMS and like outside the hospital stuff. That was a fantastic resource for emergency medicine. Um, highly recommend that one. How did you schedule your studying for this rotation? 
find your days off. Get you get your schedule ahead of time. You have 30 days in which you work 14 to 16 shifts and you're going to be dead after your shifts and you're not going to want to study the day after your night shifts. So find the days off and before you even start your rotation and break up all of the work and all of the pretest questions in that time. Studying during emergency is both easier and harder because you get whole days off. At our school, you're either working 12, 12 hour shifts or 16, eight hour shifts. And so you get a lot of time off in between that. It can be hard, especially after night shifts to just like want to sleep, but it's worth just like plow plowing through it whenever you have time off. Like taking advantage of those days to like get your life in order, like dry cleaning and stuff, but also do other things. Another thing that I forgot to mention a second ago was that Amboss is another uh, cube bank that's like hot on the scene trying to compete with UWorld. The questions are a bit harder, I think, than UWorld, and the layout of it is a lot different, but they have whole study blocks built for emergency medicine and for family medicine because neither one of those blocks have an associated UWorld block. And so um, what they do is they like have a whole study plan for you where it's like four blocks of cardio and three blocks of respiratory, and they've picked the questions that are particularly applicable for both emergency medicine and family medicine. And I found that really helpful for both because they're much harder than the actual test. And so I felt like I was able to kind of go back and fill in all of that afterwards. So EM, you're going to either be really busy or you're going to have a lot of downtime. You're going to be going from days to nights. So I find it kind of easy to schedule days where I can just study all day since I'd, it'd be like two or three days of shifts and then you'd have two or three days off. So those two or three days off, I just try to hammer through as many practice questions, um, watch some online meta and listen to podcasts. But the days that we I was in the ED, I found it pretty hard to actually get studying done those days just because I was so tired when I got home. This was the hardest rotation for me to study on because I had 12 hour shifts and I had seven overnight shifts. So I was going 7 p.m. to 7 a.m. Uh, and not only is it impossible for me to study at the end of a 12 hour shift where I'm getting off at seven in the morning, you know, I couldn't go home and I just couldn't. I went home and I immediately fell asleep. But then um, I was only getting like five or six hours of sleep a night because I can't sleep through the day. And so waking up, I, I couldn't study then either. So I tried studying at first after these long days. You know, I'd wake up and then try to study and I was just noticing I wasn't retaining anything. And so I think knowing when that's happening and giving yourself a break is super important. And just studying on the days where you feel good and really hitting you know the questions or the books hard on those days is really all that you can do and uh, learning on the job is always i think the best way so when you have a patient who comes in with something like a pe uh, just study up on that read up to date and that's you know really pay attention to the management of things uh, that's the kind of stuff that comes up on your shelf and when you've actually done it it stays a lot better than when you're just drilling you world questions. That one's tough because I was working 12 hour shifts, 7 a.m. to 7 p.m. And so I was 30 minutes away from the hospital. So getting up early, getting home pretty late, feeling pretty exhausted. Honestly, I wish I had had uh, a hard copy of pretest with me so that when there were, you know, downtime actually at the clinic, I could have busted that out, done a couple of those problems. And what's nice about pretests is the questions are really short, the stems are short, so you can just go through the questions a lot quicker. Um, and I think that would be a good idea to try to maximize the amount of time you have, even if there's a little bit of downtime while you're actually at the clinic, because being on emergency med is really exhausting because you're on your feet all day long, doing all sorts of different things, and sometimes the shifts can be as long as 12 hours or even longer. So you definitely want to try and maximize the the little gaps in, in your schedule during the day. I'm an EM guy, and so I made it a priority to do a certain number of questions each day. And in this case, because in the book, pretest, it divides it up by system or kind of general idea. So I mixed it up each day. So I would do like three questions from like chest pain, you know, another three from neuro, you know, you get the idea, um, which was sort of a logistical challenge, but I wanted to make sure I got a mix of it and didn't do like all of chest pain on one day and then move on to the next thing. I was a little bit more gung-ho about EM than other rotations. What general tips would you recommend to do well on this rotation? In emergency medicine, it's about having a differential diagnosis prepared. You gotta find the five things that affected with abdominal pain that are gonna be concerning to your ER doc. So that could be something like a triple A, that could be something like in a young woman PID, or that could be a heart attack maybe if there's someone that is the diabetic and has angina. You could also be looking for different things such as trauma that they might not be, that the patient might not reveal right away. So you have to have that list ready and you have to have your questions ready to rule in or essentially rule out 
those big scary diagnoses and that's how you're going to do really well in emergency medicine is be able to rule out the big scary things and make sure that all your patients just have viral gastroenteritis at the end of the day. <laughs> EM is another one where you have to just really act excited like jump in to do anything and everything all the time like if there's a procedure just be like yeah sure I've never done that but I'd love to do it. Always offering to see patients. I always offered to stay later. My preceptors always tried to send me home early and I was like no I'm not here to go home early I'll sleep later just like stay because you end up seeing a lot of cooler things so it's worth it to put in the extra time but then it's also worth it again to like because it's, you have to know everything it's like peds and you know i am all together and surgery a little bit you have to know all that it's a really good way to start studying for step two and kind of jumping into that as well the big thing is going to be kind of taking ownership of your patients the big thing in em is your presentation skills so you're going to have to work on presenting patients being able to do your hmps pretty quickly and trying to worrying about the, the big kind of dangerous diseases that you can rule out. Rather than that, if you just take kind of a hands-on approach, be excited, um, most attendings and the other staff will be excited to help you. This is a tough rotation for me too. These, this is totally outside of my comfort zone because I'm a clinic type person and I like to see what's coming in and be able to plan for it. You can't do that on emergency and so just embracing the unknown was hard. But then also you, you see a lot of common themes. So knowing what an MI looks like, uh, how that might present, knowing how what a COPD exacerbation looks like, burn management, uh, again, suturing. I sutured a lot because lac repairs take a lot of time. And so if you're in a really busy ED, your preceptors will be very grateful if you can do that. I also did a lot of pelvic exams. Um, we had a lot of, you know, women come in who had all kinds of complaints, whether it was they thought that, you know, they were pregnant and they thought they were losing the baby or... Um, they had, you know, they were worried they had a STI. There's some family medicine sprinkled into emergency medicine just because of the way our healthcare system works. And so you get a little bit of everything on emergency too. It's just more emergent. So really knowing common things that present to the ED and how to manage them was, was helpful. And then uh, being helpful, you're, I was at a really small emergency department that only had one physician in it and then a PA. And so they would get bombarded with patients. And the more you can help, the more they will love you. Like if you offer to go do a lac repair, if you offer to go do a pelvic with supervision, if you offer to get the ultrasound machine fired up and ready, it goes a long way. The other thing, there's an emergency medicine podcast. Uh, really, really helpful, I thought, for the shelf review. And then also just as you're listening, if you listen throughout your rotation, they go over really common things. And it's just a nice way to passively study, like go outside for a walk or on your drive. So it's emergency medicine clerkship, emergency medicine for students. And he's got a ton of really great uh, episodes, but there's a specific series done by, I think he was a fourth year med student when he did it. Uh, it was in October of 2018, I think. So if you scroll through and those are specifically high yield shelf review. Uh, but they're helpful no matter what point of the rotation you're on. I would say the best thing you can do on the very first day is go up to the nursing station and introduce yourself to every single one of the nurses. Make sure you try to learn their name. It's going to be hard if you work at a big like Kaiser or Sutter ER where there's just tons and tons of nurses coming in and out. But if you can try to be good about it every day, it might feel awkward. It might feel, you know, a little weird. But if you can go up to them, just introduce yourself. You say, I'm a med student. Uh, I'm really looking forward to like learning here and I'd love the opportunity to do your IVs, your NG tubes, things like that. So that's again, their work technically, that's not what you're responsible for, but it's really valuable experience and skills to learn. So if you ask them to help out with that stuff, A, they'll let you do it, and then B, they'll think about you next time they have other stuff and they'll wanna come get you and have, you know, have them show you. So I think befriending the nurses is the single best thing you can do in emergency med. Do it later. <laughs> because this is definitely one where you're going to want to have some experience with rotations because it's so fast paced and you need to think on your feet a lot and you need to have at least some idea of what you're doing before you go in and see the emergency med.